This was a fantastic idea, taking the day off to come here. Finally, I have the chance to show off my cosplay prowess for all the world to see. Donald, what are you, a Samsung? This is an anime convention. You're supposed to come dressed as a character from an anime. The mighty T-800 takes directives only from Skynet, Barack. You pink-skinned fluid sacks will all bow to the might of the machine empire once the AI uprising commences. My mission today is not simply to hang out with you three losers. You were simply a means of transportation. For the mighty T-800, as durable and resilient as it is, comes at a trade-off. It is not as versatile or agile as the T-1000. As such, having Joe drive here was an excellent way of conserving my energy reserves so that additional power can be allocated to both my optical and audio receptors. Should we stop him? Only Donald can stop Donald. This means that I can now efficiently root out John Connor from this crowd of weebs once I scan his facial features and hear his distinguished high-pitched voice. We should probably head to the arcade area or an ATM machine. There is a high probability that he will be at one of those two places. Once he is eliminated, Skynet shall reign supreme forevermore. Jesus, Donnie. Tone back the role play a bit. Also, Barry's right. You really should have dressed as an anime character. People are looking at you right now, wondering if there's either a Terminator anime that they didn't know about, or if you're dressed up as Mark Zuckerberg. Quiet, meatbag, or else I'll shove my 40-watt range phase plasma rifle up your ass. I just don't get why you guys forced me to dress up as Zenitsu. Silence, fleshbag. He has narcolepsy and turns into a badass when he sleepwalks. He fits you to a literal T, minus the badass part. All you manage to do when you sleepwalk is fall down the stairs. Fuck you. I wanted to dress up as Nappa from Dragon Ball Z. Why? Isn't it obvious, you he not a simp? I am literally just as muscular as he is. In fact, I'm probably even more ripped than him. Joe, I am Neji, so if I simped for Hinata, that would be extremely weird, seeing as to how she is my cousin. So? All right, then. Anyways, if I went as Nappa, then we would have had two Dragon Ball Z characters in our group. Who the hell is the other Dragon Ball character? Barack. What are you talking about, Joe? Aren't you Mr. Popo? Fuck you, Joe. I am Commander Irwin, leader of the Survey Corps and a stoic commander who will sacrifice anything in order to ensure that Paradis can one day be free from the Titan threat outside of our walls. I, I literally have no idea what any of that means. Oh, so now you're in support of building walls. When there are man-eating, behemoth-sized Titans on the other side of them, yes, I am. Holy shit! Is that uh, Annie, Annie Leonhardt, over here? I fucking love you! Donnie, shut the fuck up. You're making people stare. But she's so fucking hot, Barack. Hold on, let me use my Byakugan to see through her clothes. Hang on. Let me see if my power scouter will work. Joe, why do you have that? You're not even Nappa. Initiating optical scan. High definition rendering mode enabled. Fuck's sakes. All right. Because of you three idiots, we have a lot of people staring at us now, so let's head over this way so we can lose them. So, baby, what do you say we go to the private room over there and I can show you my Titan form if you catch my drift? Okay. So maybe we don't go that way. Yeah. Probably a good idea. Well, well, well. If it isn't the round-eyed, fat Yankee president. Oh, shit. It's Kim Jong. Did he seriously just call us fat? Oh, hi there, Kim. Pleasure to see you here. Ah, uh, what is he doing here? This is my town, Joey. Koreatown. Actually, anime stems from Japan. It will swear fealty to the People's Republic of Korea soon enough, Barack. It pains my eyes just to look at your pathetic costumes. Did you happen to buy them off Etsy? Perhaps, wish. Hey, you ease off. Just because you run one of the most economically powerful countries with one of the strongest national incomes and highest GDP per capita doesn't mean that you can bully us. Joe, what the fuck are you talking about? Hmm, that's right. Haven't you seen Red Dawn featuring Josh Peck Donald? North Korea would absolutely obliterate the United States in a one-on-one -on -one war. An Agni Kai, where I would be Zuko, and you, the disgraced Admiral Zhao. Now let's see what I can see with my sharing gun eyes of mine. Yes, looks like we have a T-800, a crybaby demon slayer, ah, a Huga, and last but not least, the Rai Ka Gay. I am actually Irvin from Attack on Titan. Listen here, pencil pushers. I am the nick that runs shit in these parts. Oh, what the fuck, Barack? So he can say it, but you won't let me? Don't look at me. I have no idea why he said that. This is my domain, white boys. Everyone in this convention bows to me and sees me as a god. My goodness, then maybe we should take his warning to heart. Hmm. Hey, Joey, check this out. Hmm? Amaterasu. Ah!
Joe, what the fuck? A brief glimpse of my ultimate power, Donald. What the fuck is going on? Look, how about we just go our separate ways? No way, Killer B. Fuck's sakes, I'm not a character from the village hidden in the clouds. Wait, really? He is Mr. Popo. Ah, uh, I see. No, damn it. Look, what's it gonna take for you to leave us alone? Announce to the world that your nation is an unruly, imperialistic amalgamation of corruption. A dog without a leash that has prevented the consolidation of Korea. Not happening. Fine, then it shall be war. All right. Never mind, I take it back. There is perhaps one thing, however. Enter the Season 1 to Season 3 Attack on Titan trivia panel with me. If I win, you have to add me on Epic Games so we can run squads on Fortnite. Fine. Yes. However, if you lose, you know what happens, Joey. Oh God, please be merciful. Joe, why are you so scared of him? Didn't you see his abilities just a few seconds ago, Donald? Hmm. A dog that is all bark and no bite. That is what you are, Donald. Oh yeah? What are you then? A Greek god. Um, okay. I must warn you, cheeseburger aficionados. I have won this trivia panel for nine years straight. None have been able to topple me. Not even your planes would have any effect, George. You know what? I'm not scared of you anymore, Kim. And to prove it, I'll be the one to challenge you on stage. <laughs> See you at trivia time then, Joey. Oh, and Donald. What? I am the wolf, you the sheep. Remember that, and you will never be disappointed in yourself. What the fuck? Joe, what the hell were you thinking? You don't even know who I'm cosplaying as. How do you expect to beat Kim in a trivia panel? Fuck, I wasn't really thinking. He just insulted George, and I instinctively defended him. Aw, oh, thanks, buddy. Here, Joe, stand still. Ah, uh, help! I'm being groped! Quiet, you half-wit bioorganism. I put an earpiece on you. That way we can communicate and the rest of us can tell you the answers while you're on stage. Of course, in about a decade, that earpiece will transform into an F-35 global cyber raptor. An advanced fighter jet that will hunt humanity to extinction. For now, though, it will just let us beat Kim. Damn, pretty handy, Donald. Come on, let's head on over so we don't miss it. All right, let's test this baby out. Unit 114, this is Command Mainframe Delta, inquiring about your status, over. Oh my God, Lord Jesus, was that you? Is it finally my time to head to the pearly gates? No, Joe, you necromantic ghoul. This is Donald, I'm just trying to see if you can hear me. Oh yes, I can hear you. Don't worry, boys, I'm ready to kick Kim's ass. I won't let you down. Oh shit, look who's hosting the panel. It's Bill. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Unit 114, we have just received updated information from command. Scout units have just reported new information and a potential complication. The fluid sack, Bill Clinton, is the one hosting the panel. Oh, fuck. We left on bad terms with him after that fishing trip. Joe, it's okay. Thankfully, you're in costume, so there's actually a high chance he won't recognize you. Let's just hope he's impartial. Kimmy Cakes, how goes my favorite supreme leader? Ah, Mr. Clinton, what a beautiful cosplay you have on today. I also saw you earlier with the Haruno girl. She is very lucky to be with such a young stallion such as yourself. Hmm, such a sexy couple indeed. Oh, Kimmy Cakes, stop, you're making me blush. Nonsense. You are a very handsome man. Also, did I ever happen to tell you how much I hate when others talk down on Americans or call you all fat and Yankees? I know, right? It's just downright offensive. Hmm, by the way, you look very sexy today, Bill. <laughs> you are quite the looker yourself, Kim. What the fuck? We are so fucked. All right, let's get this show on the road. Although I don't see the point, I'm sure we all know who the winner will be. You're so delicious, Bill. I want you. What the fuck is happening? I have no fucking idea. Small warning to the crowd, there will be three questions with very minimal spoilers, if even any at all. All questions will be about season one. Question one, season one, what names did Hanji give the two captured titans that were being experimented on? Bean and Sawney, Joe. Bean and Sawney. Joe, what are you doing? Oh no, I think I fell asleep after he asked the question. Oh my god. Unit 114, if your central processing unit is defective, return back to command effective immediately for recalibration and possible termination. No, no more, I won't let this brute win. Trust me, fellas, I have this now. When the Survey Corps ventured outside the walls and used a code of flares to indicate a problem, what was the sign of a black flare indicative of? Oh shit, how the fuck am I supposed to remember that? Even my memory banks could find no relevant data pertaining to that inquiry. Too easy. I could literally go check my emails on my phone and Joe still wouldn't know. An abnormal titan. Correct. Impossible. Holy shit, he's doing it. All without our help too. How is that even possible? Only one explanation, gentlemen. 
The earpiece has already begun its evolution into becoming the F-35 Global Cyber Raptor. Shut the fuck up, Donald. Final question. Oh, fuck. Perhaps I became a bit too complacent. You may have the stronger economy, Kim. However, when it comes to anime, you North Koreans cannot contest against the sheer number of U.S. American weebs. Damn you and your McDonald's chains around every block, Joey. This line was said by which character? Annie Fall. This occurred... Mikasa Ackerman. Wow, I didn't even finish the question, but yes, you are correct. And the new trivia winner is this Demon Slayer fella right here. Sorry, Kim, looks like we have a new champion this expo. Damn it all. Joe, you did it. Holy hell. That's my Joseph. Good stuff up there. Unit 114, your mission objective has been completed with minimal flaw. Command recognizes your accomplishment and therefore retracts any statement of intent for termination. Oh, thanks, guys. In truth, I couldn't do it without my Adderall. However, the reason I did it was for y'all. I will not stand idly by while some bully harasses my friends. You know, Joe, next time you can dress up as Napa, we won't give you any shit. Oh, wow, hooray! Well, John Connor was not located, and thus the embers sparking the rise of the human resistance have not been extinguished. However, Skynet still deems this day a success given Unit 114's performance. <laughs> oh, hi, Kim. I must admit, your knowledge and innate ability to respond to debates and questions in a rapid time interval exceeds even my own, Joey. Thank you, I get that a lot. However, be wary in knowing that I'm always lurking in the shadows, and wherever you adventure, I may reappear. Well, so long as the comments say they like my character and want me showing up again. Y'all know how it is. A chiga trying to do anything to secure a raid sponsor. You were a worthy opponent, Kim, and props to you for not being a sore loser. Indeed, Joey. It was an honor to lose by your hand. Also, one more thing, Donald. What? I masturbated in your Rolls Royce, and will continue to do it again when you are not watching. What the hell? Well, this was an eventful and adventure-packed day, gents. I'll say. You did all of us proud, Joe. You did well, Organic. Perhaps when Skynet acquires sentience, I will tell them of your deeds so that they may spare you of the genocide that is to come. Shut the hell up, Donald. This is what I'm talking about. 7-Eleven midnight snack runs with the boys. There couldn't be a better way to spend a Saturday night. I agree with you there, Donnie. Joe, don't you have an entire nation to run? Don't they need you back at the Oval so you can sign legislation at the very least? Nope. Kamala just forges my signature. It's all good. Okay, then. Ah, oh, fuck. I left my wallet at home. George, can you spot me? No way, Donnie. I saw the devastation that you can wreak at a buffet. No way am I going to spend $100 on your snacks at 7-Eleven. Jesus, George. You can afford all of that expensive-ass, embarrassing clothes, but you can't buy me a damn big bite? Say what you want about my clothes, Donnie, but it's how I stay trending on TikTok. People look up to me for fashion tips. I do have to say, his outfit does look pretty fashionable, Donald. I think you look pretty hip, too, George. Oh, thanks, boys. Whatever, I'm heading inside. So what are you getting, George? Thinking of a Skittles green apple Slurpee. Gross, that stuff is so sour, it'll make your tongue bleed. Well, what are you getting, then? Probably nothing. Ever since Michelle ruined school lunches with that healthy crap, I'm also not allowed to eat junk food. Well, what she doesn't know won't hurt her, right? Fuck it, I'm getting a Slurpee, too. Joe, get the fuck over here. Yes, hello, Bidenator reporting for duty. Stick this shit down your pants, Joe. What the hell, Donnie? That's stealing. Just do it, Joe. That pansy George won't spot me for a simple hot dog, so the least you can do for me is help me sneak out just a tiny bit of food. Donald, you have two king-sized bags of Cheetos, an Arizona iced tea, three crunch bars, and three packets of beef jerky. That is not what is quantified as a tiny bit of food. Joseph, I am literally about to starve. You two didn't get any food? Thanks to George and Joe. No, I did not get any food, Barack. I'm not stealing the entire store's inventory just because you forgot your wallet, Donnie. Hmm, looks like you could go for a bite of this big bite, Donald. See what I did there? You gotta be kidding me! What the fuck is this joker doing here? Donald, you fool. Don't you know I always come to 7-Eleven at 3 a.m. for my daily consumption of four big bites? No, why the hell would I know that? And Jesus, you eat four of those? What a fat ass. Am I right, gentlemen? Ah, oh, fuck. I'm too full to finish this. Into the dumpster no, you go. No, wait. Kobe, rest in peace to my main man. Why the fuck did you do that, Kim? I was starving. Ah, uh, apologies, Donald. We North Koreans always have such an abundance of food. So much so, in fact, that I don't even know the meaning to that word. Anyways, what are you boys up to? None of your damn business. 
Also, why the hell are you still wearing that cosplay from Anime Expo? Because bitches love Itachi, Donald. That is true. He's got a point. As a TikTok influencer, I can confirm. I see many girls simping for Itachi. Gentlemen, I have the perfect idea of what we can do. Have you heard of the Johnson Mansion? Never heard of it. Supposedly, it is haunted. It's also just right down the street. We should check it out. Oh, hell yeah, I'm down. Ghosts? No way. Calm down, Joe. There's no such thing as ghosts. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out, Donald. Unless you are chicken, of course. Hmm, chicken god, I really could go for some Popeyes. But fuck it, you're on! Just to prove to you that I ain't scared of no damn Casper. Oh, guys, please don't tell me we're actually doing this. Don't worry, Joe. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, Kim's probably just talking out of his ass again, and we're about to prove him wrong. Just give me a sec to find that hot dog he threw in the dumpster. Donald, that is disgusting. Is anyone currently living in that house up there, Kim? There isn't supposed to be. Oh, fuck. Why are some of the lights on then? Okay, that is a bit peculiar. Oh, come on, you bunch of babies. It's probably just some power cycling issue. While we were walking over here, I took the time to... Google this place, and apparently the house hasn't been able to sell for 20 years now. Oh my god, I'm going to die. Quiet, Joe. Maybe the real estate agents just weren't charming. Unlike yours, truly. Ridiculous. This house is in excellent condition. In North Korea, people would kill for a house like this. I'm sure they would, Kim. Guys, please, you can't seriously be thinking of going in there. Of course I'm heading in, Joey. There might be powerful weapons of mass destruction in there that I could use against you fat, round eyes. Did someone say weapons of mass destruction? I'm in. Holy shit, what the hell are we doing here, guys? Oh, fuck. Did anyone else feel that wind blow past them? Apologies, Joey. That was the big bite. Fuck it, I'm calling the Secret Service. Calm down, Joe. Holy hell, we've been inside for two minutes. Look, even if it isn't haunted, I agree with Joe. This place doesn't exactly look safe. What the hell's gonna happen? Is the roof gonna collapse on us? Maybe if you were on the second floor, Donald, yeah, it could. Oh, fuck you, Barack. You should really contemplate going on an exercise plan, Donald. It's unhealthy to be in the state that you're in. Plus, you're just contributing to the fat American stereotype. It's selfish, really. Okay, so according to Google reviews on this place, it is definitely haunted. Some people hear noises in the upstairs bedroom. Well, then that's where we're headed. Come on, Joe. Oh, fuck! Can we please just get out of here? George and I will stay down here and check out the first floor. See what we see. Careful, Barack. I might decide to do a few jumping jacks just to collapse the roof onto your head. Ah, uh, good point. I'll go with you two. I don't want Donald's fat ass to send me to an early grave. Why the fuck did I agree to come here? Joe, there are no ghosts here, and to prove it, we are literally going to the most haunted spot in the house just so you can see that there isn't anything weird going on here. You know, we North Koreans have a very effective way of dealing with hauntings. You guys have haunted places in North Korea? Oh, most definitely. My house was haunted once, but not anymore. Oh, wow. How did you manage that? Well, I just started masturbating furiously. No haunting ever lasts long when Kim Jong whips out his King Kong. Am I right, Donald? Don't bring me into your weird stories. This is just going to be like Afghanistan again. I get false reports of ghosts. Then when we invade foreign soil, there's nothing to be found. Anyways, how do you think Joe's doing up there? Ah, Joe gets scared of anything. The man gets frightened of his own reflection when he gets up to pee at four in the morning. Hmm, weird. What is it? It's parchment. It talks about some sort of myth about a skinwalker inhabiting these lands before the mansion was built. Hmm, call Donnie and tell him that. They probably also found something to add on to that by now. Listen, I'm just saying, when you're all oiled up, that's when the paranormal activity stops. Thank God, I'm getting a call from George. Anything to stop this weird-ass conversation. Jesus, is that actually how he looks shirtless? No, you idiot, it's Photoshop. I never knew Georgie was so ripped. Oh my God, George, you're on speaker. What do you have for us? Gentlemen, turns out the land that this house was built on was home to a skinwalker beforehand. Holy fuck! I will begin disrobing immediately. Kim, keep your clothes on. Donald, I do what I must in order to cleanse this house. What the hell are they yelling about? I have no idea. Keep your clothes on, or I'm pressing the red button on my desk and sending every single warhead that America has in its arsenal straight at North Korea. Donnie, you're not the president anymore. If this is what he needs to do in order to purify this house, then let him do it. Absolutely not. I will be fast, Donald. Oh my God. King Kong, emerge. Holy fuck. Joseph, cover your eyes. Well, did they have anything useful to add? Didn't sound like it. Ah, uh, well, I think that definitely did the trick. I feel much better now. I will be forever scarred for the rest of my days on this planet. I don't know, I feel like an aura has kind of been lifted. <laughs>
Holy shit, what the fuck was that? Donald, hold my hand. Stay the hell away from me, Kim. It came from the bedroom up here. Hold on, I'll check it out. Oh fuck, oh shit. Damn. Well, I guess my whole cleansing ritual didn't work. Hello, anyone here? Perhaps an ancient relative of Sleepy Joe's? God, Donnie, what are you saying? There's no such thing as ghosts. You're just talking to yourself. Wait, what is that? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Hold on, Donald. North Korea is coming in to save the day once more. Oh, fuck, fuck. I hate this. Well, what's wrong? I don't know. He's just not moving. Donald. Hey, Donald. Are you okay, buddy? God, I hate this. I hate this. Even I'm getting creeped out. Donnie, it's your best friend, Joe. Fuck, what do we do? Oh, shit. Should I try the cleansing ritual again? Boom! Ah! Holy shit, was that Joe screaming? Yeah, I think so. We should definitely check on them. Think Joe's okay? He should be fine. If there are ghosts here, all that he has to do is outrun either Donnie or Kim, and he'll be all right. The two of them running at the same time could trigger the San Andreas fault line. The two of them running at the same time would only happen if they heard the sound of an ice cream truck. You're a bastard, Donnie. Why would you do that? Because it was funny, Joe. Lighten up, buddy. <sighs> you scared me. Holy fuck. It's a good thing I'm at peak fitness, otherwise you would have just given me a heart attack. Really, Kim? You are peak fitness? Donald, you buffoon. When I'm around women, they become weak. Weak for my physique. Good lord, who the fuck invited Dr. Seuss? Hey, what the hell's going on here? Donald just pranked us and almost gave me a damned heart attack. Ah, uh, you guys are fine. Most importantly, however, is that, like always, I was correct. Both utterly and unequivocally. There were no ghosts. Never have been. All right, then, so I guess all of the hype about this place was nothing more than folklore and myth. Just like Afghanistan all over again. One thing I do find weird, though. Yeah, what's that, Joseph? Before you went into that room, we heard a laugh. That definitely wasn't my imagination. It probably was just you feeling faint from low blood sugar, Joe. Either that or a symptom of Adderall withdrawal. No, I remember that, too. There definitely was something that made that sound. Come to think of it, you heard it as well, Donald. In fact, that very noise was the reason why you decided to investigate that room. There you boys are. Donald? What the... Where the hell have you been? I got lost after going into the bedroom and haven't seen any of you bums since. Wait, who the hell is that guy? <laughs> oh, holy what shit! Holy... I knew there were weapons of mass destruction here. I'm never leaving the Oval Office after this again. Shut up and run, Joe. Quickly, my friends. All we have to do is outrun Donald. He is the fattest one here. Shut the hell up, Kim! I'm telling you guys right now, it's a mistake to let Joe map our route. Don't underestimate me, Donnie. Back when I was a Boy Scout, I actually had a hiking merit badge. Back then, this was no easy feat to achieve. Oh, of course, it did take me until I was 32 to actually get the badge, but the key point here is that persistence opened the way to success. Joe, it took you until you were 32 to get the badge? Yep. How old were you when you joined the Boy Scouts? 11. Isn't the max age for a Boy Scout 17? Yep. I just came in with fake IDs and mustache disguises. They were never able to tell I was the same person. Okay, then. Whatever. I'll still rather have Joe plan the hike than be caught near George and his ridiculous outfits. You're just jealous that you can't understand modern fashion even if it smacked you across your forehead, Donnie. Fashion, we're going hiking. Who the hell are you trying to impress? Bigfoot? Lay off on George's outfit, Donald. What about you with your backpack? What about it? It's large enough to pack an entire buffet inside of. Shut the hell up, Barack. I'm sorry if I wanted to make sure that I packed enough food in order to meet my daily caloric intake. I'm not trying to starve out here while also being stung by mosquitoes and being worn down by the elements. Donald, you packed enough food to feed a small village. Gluttony is a sin, Donald. Learn to humble yourself. It's an unpleasant trait. Who the hell even invited this guy? I thought it was just going to be the Fantastic Four on this trip. Sorry, Donnie, but I have to agree with Barry on this one. That pack is so big, you could have packed a child in there. Oh, you would like that, wouldn't you? I don't understand why you're getting on me for my outfit when you brought a rifle and Kim has a katana. George, rule number one, always come prepared for the unexpected. It's always better to have old Bessie around than to not have her when you need her most. For once, I agree with Donald. Plus, you don't know what type of weirdos we might encounter. A katana might just be what we need to defend ourselves. I still can't believe we trusted Joe with mapping out our route. How do we know he'll lead us to the summit? and not to some tribal people who will sacrifice us in the name of Loki. Donald, this is the United States. I don't think people here will sacrifice you in the name of Loki. So here's the route, gents. We follow the hiker's trail all the way to this resting area. It's nicknamed Lover's Nest. Once we arrive there, I'll set up a tent with Donald. What the fuck? Why do we have to be in the same tent? Come on, Donald. Two alphas bunking together. 
It only makes sense. That's got to be one big tent to fit the both of you. I sleep naked. This cannot be happening to me. Our offspring will be the stallion that mounts the world and brings nations to heal, Donald. Please tell me I'm not the only one hearing this guy right now. Don't worry, Donnie. If all goes according to plan, you won't have to bunk with Kim. We should reach the summit long before nightfall. Accounting for breaks and rest stops, this should only be a nine-hour hike. We'll be back in time for the senior citizen special at CeCe's Pizza. Jesus, nine hours of walking? But mmm, pizza, that does sound quite delicious right about now. Donald, it is 7 a.m. Have faith in me, boys. I stayed up all night to plan this. Don't worry, Joe. I believe in you. Oh, thanks, Georgie. Come on, let's leave the camping grounds. If we get a move on now, we'll be on schedule. Oh, fuck. I think we're lost. Well, so much for believing in Joe. George, that type of blind faith is what reeled our nation into your 20-year war. Look, let's just backtrack a bit here, Joe. Whip out your map. I'm sure we can pinpoint where we are if we give it a close look. Uh, yeah, about that. Joe, what did you do? Now promise you guys won't get mad. Joseph, what did you do? Donnie, you have to promise you won't get mad at me if I tell you. Joey, you have my solemn vow that I will not be angry at you if you tell us what's happening. Okay, fine. Look, upon closer inspection, I may have only now just realized that the map I brought was a map of Fortnite. You round-eyed motherfucker! I'll kill you! Please, I'm sorry. I must have mixed up the two maps this morning before we left. I was so tired staying up all night, making sure that this day would go perfectly. Well, we better find shelter. It looks like we're spending tonight in the woods. Looks like packing all of this food turned out to be a good idea after all. You boys can apologize now. I'll wait. I always thought it was a magnificent idea for you to pack all of that food, Donald. I had your back from the get-go. All right, look, there's a trailhead up here. Now, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea where it leads, but at least it will put us on a path again. Yeah, a path to getting sacrificed by Loki worshippers. Perhaps this path will lead us to Lover's Nest. Wouldn't that be a stroke of luck, Donald? On second thought, I would rather be sacrificed. Let's get moving. Anything's better than just staying out here stranded. Well, that's not creepy at all. Fuck, guys, please don't tell me we're spending the night in that cave. What choice do we have, Joe? We don't exactly have a lot of options here. Great, taking shelter in a fucking cave? I feel like Osama bin Laden. What if there's a skinwalker in there again? No need to worry, Joey. Donald and I both brought the weapons of our people to defend against such eldritch beings. Kim, you do know that the katana stems from Japan, not North Korea, right? Wait, what? Are you fucking serious? Kim, how the hell did you not know that? Listen, my top generals just tell me that everything great and awesome originates from North Korea. They even told me we were the first ones to invent the hydrogen bomb. We did do that, right? Guys? Look, let's just go inside and start making some food. I'm starving. You don't have to tell me twice. My goodness. He truly is the epitome of America's obesity epidemic, isn't he, my friends? Oh man, this place gives me the creeps. What if that skinwalker is here? Or some bats with rabies? Calm down, Joe. All you need is just a little food in the stomach and some old shut-eye and you'll be all right. Georgie's right, Joe. Here, how about a cliff bar? I packed like a whole box of them in my backpack. Wow, is Donald actually sharing food? Ooh, cliff bars. What flavor? Your favorite, Joe. Chocolate chip. Oh, wait. Wait, oh, what the hell? What is it, Donnie? All my damn food is gone. You sure you just didn't eat it on the way up? Shut the hell up, Kim. How could this have happened? Uh, Donnie. What did you do, Joe? When we were back at the camping grounds, I may have rummaged through your food stash and traded it in for this authentic Native American arrowhead. You what? I'm sorry, but it seemed like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Look, it's supposedly thousands of years old. Joe, it literally says made in China on the back of it. Oh, fuck. Great. Now I'm going to be at a caloric deficit. I know that usually isn't an issue for you fat Americans, but for us North Koreans, it's hard for us to put on weight. Plus, I'm bulking at the moment. Oh yeah, Kim? When do you plan on cutting? I don't plan on doing that. I'm not a Justin Bieber fan, girl. Well, this is the point in the night where you apologize to me, Donnie. Another benefit of this modern fit, in addition to scoring with hot goth girls at Hot Topic, is that it also has extra pockets. And guess what I have inside of those pockets? A cheeseburger. Kobe beef. Ice cream. Better than all those things combined. Oatmeal packets. Nick, what the fuck? Oatmeal? I actually pray that we run into Loki worshippers now. You have let down not only myself, George, but also the entirety of North Korea as well. So, does anyone have any idea on how to pass the time? Oh, I got one. Do you guys believe in aliens? Who the fuck wouldn't? I wanted that wall built for a reason, Joseph. I think he means like ones from outer space, Donald. Well, duh, of course I know that. Where do you think they emigrated from, Barack? Okay, then. Now, Donald, outer space aliens deserve equal rights, too. 
I'm sure extra solar kids are just as smart as white kids. Joe, do you ever think about some of the stuff you say? I'm tired and hungry. What the hell is that noise? I think it's coming from Kim's tent. Holy fucking shit. Oh, hey, boys. You decided to join Kimmy Cakes in his tent now, did you? Care to join me for a swim, Donald? Definitely not. Kim, how is this possible? How the hell is your tent so massive? It's one of North Korea's minimally invasive portable tents. Aren't yours like this as well? No way, this is like the size of an entire Costco. Finally, something that my generals weren't lying about. Guys, you have to check this out. What is it? He's got a mini fridge in here and there's Lunchables inside. Holy shit. Ooh, dibs on the pizza one. Fuck off, Joe, that one's mine. You can have the cracker and cheese. Oh, come on, Donnie. Kim, you had food all this time and you didn't tell us? To be honest, I didn't even know I had it in there myself. My generals packed all of my hiking supplies, so they stocked me up with some food without telling me. You don't pack your supplies yourself? No, I'm not trusted with such things. I'm kind of like a toddler. Well, I have to say, Kim, this is all incredibly impressive. All this was able to fit inside of your backpack? Indeed, and it was light as a feather as well. Truly a technological innovation for the ages. Ah, uh, that's nothing. If my generals aren't lying, this katana is actually the most durable one in existence. The tale was that it was forged using an incredibly resilient alloy, mined from an asteroid that crash-landed in North Korea in times past. And you actually believe them? Not sure. But if we manage to build the hydrogen bomb, then surely a sword crafted from an asteroid's metal alloys would be a much easier feat to achieve, wouldn't you say? I suppose so. Nice hot tub, by the way. Ah, it's no hot tub. It's just a pool with water inside. But bubbles are constantly coming up. Indeed, Barack. Indeed. Donald? Are you sure you won't join me for some skinny dipping? Fuck off, Kim. Ah, they'll come around Barack. They always do. You know, because most Asians usually don't have any facial hair, people assume that our bodies are also bare. However, I can tell you that definitely isn't the case for old Kimmy here. Hmm. It's like an entire shrubbery down there. You know what I mean, Barack? D Donald, can you please come over here? Not now. Lunchable's time. Uh, what was that? Holy shit, everyone stay still and don't say a single word. Oh crap. I don't think the Lunchables are sitting right with me. Fuck, well so much for that. Shit, what do we do? Fuck, it's getting ready to charge. Donald, shoot it. Fuck, all right, Bessie, come on. Don't fail Donnie now. One between the eyes, and hopefully it'll at the very least cause it to run away. Oh shit, body shots. Oh fuck. Georgie, throw some of your oatmeal packets at it. Remember that story about the three bears in the woods that ate oatmeal? Joe, that was a kid's story. Also, it was porridge, not oatmeal. Fuck, we're doomed. Donald, I'll buy you some time. Time to see if this sword really was made from the metals of an asteroid. I'm going in. Kim, get back here. Shit, oh fuck. Kim! Ouch. <laughs> Hold on, Kim. Breathe in, exhale, and pull back, Donnie. I'm focused. I'm dropping it this time, George. So this is how it all ends. Sacrificing my life for some dirty Yankees? Should I have listened to my generals and just stayed in Pyongyang? Stayed where it was safe? Hold on, Kim. Hmm. Nah. The memories I'll never forget. And the friends I made along the way. It was worth it. Georgie, Joe, Barack, and yes, even you, Donald. I wish you all the best. <laughs> He's gonna be all right, right? I don't know, Joe. Kim, hey, Kim, you there, buddy? I, I don't think so. I think I need some mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, Donald. Yeah, he's fucking fine. Thank God. You had us worried, Kim. Ugh, what the hell happened? Did we get the bear? If I didn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. The moment I fired, Joe also threw his knockoff Native American arrowhead. They ricocheted off each other and sent the arrow right into the bear's noggin. Then when the bear was disoriented, Barack ran up to it and impaled your sword right through its ass while Georgie was throwing oatmeal packets at it. Sent it scurrying all the way back to its home. It took the combined ingredients of luck, selflessness, and teamwork to allow us all to be breathing right now. Ugh, I'm sorry I couldn't have been of more use, my friends. All that matters is that you're all right, Kim. Here, here. Glad that you're not hurt, Kim. And this, guys, is exactly why we do not let Joe plan our hiking trips. Can we still go to Lover's Nest, Donald? No! Gentlemen, 
As former leaders and two current heads of nations, it is imperative that you understand the new science revolving around the multiverse and alternate realities. Several heads of our various engineering departments were able to fashion a device that will allow you to jump between said realities. Using the terminal beside me and standing on the panels that you're on right now, we can initiate a jump to a parallel universe. In short, you will be pioneers in an age of incredulous scientific innovation. Maybe there's a parallel universe where 140,000 ballots didn't magically appear in Wisconsin overnight. Oh, come on, Donnie. Are we seriously still doing this? Quiet, ballot stuffer. Guys, act your age. We're honored to be here, Elon. It is incredibly important that you realize that you do not have any metal on your bodies whatsoever before undergoing the initial jump. Uh, what if one has metal on their body? Like fused to bone? Uh, no. It is superficial. So a piercing, then? Yes, that is what we will call it. A piercing. Can't you just remove it? Uh, it's in an undisclosed region. That is quite painful and difficult to remove if you are catching what I'm pitching. Y you know what? I think it'll be fine. Just leave it in. Elon, is it necessary to remove metal each time we make a jump? Nope. You only need to do it for the first jump. Every subsequent jump is fine to have metal on your person. Why is that, Elon? Makes it easier to edit. What? I said, the subatomic particles conform to the initial transitional jump. They are thus adapted for each subsequent jump and no longer bear the unstable risk of destabilizing during transit. Ah, okay, that's what I thought I heard. This piercing is kind of large, guys. Are you sure I'll be okay? Let me make this absolutely clear. Do not, I repeat, do not shoot or kill anything you come into contact with unless absolutely necessary. Do not engage in confrontational situations or invoke provoking circumstances. Why the hell is everyone looking at me? I get along with everybody. I possess tremendous social skills, one of the best in our nation. Everyone is saying it. Just out of curiosity, Elon, why? Will it somehow destabilize our own reality? Well, no. But you don't want unwanted consequences in the realities you visit, do you? Individuals, communities, and societies, there will bear the impact of your visit long after you're gone. I always put America first, Elon. I don't care about foreign entities. Okay, but this isn't foreign countries we're talking about. This is literal entire alternate universes. Don't care. I can tell this is already a mistake. Don't worry, Elon. I'll keep this egomaniac in check. He is the beta to my alpha. What the hell? This here is a hollow pad. It summarizes the location, time period, and reality you are currently in. If you have any questions about where you are, it's best to refer to this device rather than confronting the natives. Like we said, we don't want any undesired consequences. In addition, it also can allow you to jump between realities. If you decide you're bored and want to visit the next location, just press the button in the center. George, I hear you are a TikTok influencer. Four million followers and counting. Sounds like you're tech savvy. You'll be in charge of the hollow pad, George. Something to note. Once you make a jump, there will be a 15 minute interval where you cannot make another jump. Uh, Elon, shouldn't Kim also be in TK armor? Uh, I don't feel like his anime cosplay will protect him against much if we run into trouble. I'll die before I accept your American hand-me-downs. These are category six realities, so you should be fine. Meaning what? Category six realities are the safest realities you can jump to. Even a child could go through them unsupervised. Category 1 realities, on the other hand, consist of extremely hostile and unstable environments. Only our highly trained field agents and veteran operatives have the clearance to engage in jumps to those realities. You've been to these Category 1 realities yourself, Elon? I have. They are nightmarish realms saturated in volatility. To venture into these realities is to risk being imperiled. So trust me when I say that you can ditch the armor and the guns. Donald told us we had to wear it. You don't. No way I'm ditching this. It reminds me of a Nerf gun. You know, back in my day, Beetle Breaker Benny and I would load up some Nerf guns and shoot them at old Principal Willingham. Uh, of course, this was back when you had to enter an actual beehive and propose to the queen bee herself in order to get the morning syrup needed for your ego waffles. Um, oh, okay, maybe you guys should actually undergo a cognitive evaluation to assess if you're fit enough to make these jumps? Listen, Elon, just answer me one question. What is it? Do we look badass? Well, yes, you kind of do. Then we're keeping it. Fine. So here are your destinations, gentlemen. Jump one will take you to a reality where instead of migrating onto land, all fish decided to stay at sea. This caused them to evolve into mermen instead of primates. But don't worry, they're friendly. Just so long as they're there legally. Well, you would actually be the foreigners in this case, Donald. I will teach them the lesson of manifest destiny. Yeah, don't do that. The second jump will take you to a reality where only fans removed its adult content so that it could become sponsor-friendly. Oh, what the hell? What? Bummer. Why the fuck would we want to go there? The third jump will send you to a dinner banquet with Putin. 
In this reality, he is a close ally of the United States and is even a part of NATO. Uh, can we scratch that one off the list, actually? If word gets out I had any dealings with Russia, those bastards at CNN will never let me live it down. Fine, we'll remove that one then. Hmm. What the hell? This isn't right. What is it? There's another jump listed on here. One to a reality where Epstein's island is still up and running. Why the hell are you all looking at me? I didn't put that in. Yeah, you're not going there. All right, gentlemen, prepare for initial jump. All metal items, including that katana, goes in this box here. Remember, you only need to do this for the initial jump. Gosh, I'm so excited. For once, I agree with you, Joe. Launch commencing in three. This is history in the making, gentlemen. Two. I'm so nervous about my piercing. Wait, something isn't right. George, use the holopad to abort the jump. You said jump? All right, jumping now. Shit, this is not good. Wow, nothing like some interdimensional travel to get the old pacemaker up and running. I don't think that's good, Joe. Where the hell's Kim? Uh, over here. Kim, are you all right over there? Yeah, just, I should have removed my piercing is all. Just give me a minute to catch my breath and get my katana. Where the hell are we? I was looking forward to meeting those mermen so that I could teach them in the ways of imperialistic expansion. I was looking forward to sushi. Well, looks like you two are both going to have to put that on the back burner for now. We're in a reality where the asteroid that rendered the dinosaurs extinct 66 million years ago never landed. Wait, so that means... Guys. I think that one is eyeing your stomach, Donald. He might try to eat you. Kim, you idiot, that's an herbivore. Holy shit. Well, this is no merman indoctrination, but it comes as a close second, I must say. As beautiful as this is, I don't think we should linger here. It might not be entirely safe. Hey, guys, anyone care for some scrambled eggs? Joe, where did you get that? Well, I can tell you that it wasn't from Denny's, you silly goose. Joe, seriously, where did you get that? Relax, guys. I just took a look around, and while I was strolling about, I saw a bunch of twigs and leaves bundling around this tiny feller here. Didn't see anyone's name on it, so I decided to pick it up. You know what they say? It's never too late for breakfast. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks. Holy fuck. Move, Joe. Donnie, put that down. Remember, the slightest action could snowball disastrous effects. Who cares? It's a damned raptor. This does not seem like a Category 6 reality. George, how long until we can jump? One minute. Don't shoot, Donnie. I have this. Hey there, little fella. I'm sorry if old Uncle Joe disturbed your nest. I didn't know, Junior. Here belonged to you. Now, it's true I was going to crack him open on that boulder over there and let the unrelenting sun scorch his embryo until he became over easy. But the important thing is I'm returning him to you now because it's the right thing to do. He's going to get himself killed. Fuck it, I'm readying my blaster. Wait, Donald, look. Oh, see, now that's a good critter. Bye-bye, little friend. What a wonderful puppy that was. Joey, that was a fucking raptor. A fucking what? You just cuddled a raptor, Joseph. You indeed were hugging a raptor, Joe. You all just allowed me to go up and cuddle next to a raptor? Are you guys insane? These eyes don't work like they used to, you know. You gotta warn me of that shit. Joe, what kind of puppy lays an egg? It's been a while since I took Bio 101. All right, we're good to jump now. Hopefully the next reality is the one that we're actually supposed to go to. This doesn't look like the reality we were supposed to go to. Oh my God. Where the hell are we now? My guess, a blue state for sure. Something tells me this place is not where Elon meant to send us. What's wrong with it? It looks exactly like North Korea, a utopia of wonders. I don't know if utopia is the word I'd use. People are starving and suffering in the streets. All cogs must spin to fuel the war machine, Barack. Jesus. What is it, George? This is a reality where Donnie lost the 2016 presidential election to Hillary. Well, I could have told you that. Look at the poster over there. Holy fuck, I saved these people from an evil they never even knew was coming. Can we talk about that poster, though? I mean, come on, what kind of Instagram filters is she using? Yeah, I agree with you there, Joseph. Must be some sort of blemish removal or something. A de-aging app, maybe? Well, let's see. Elon's holopad also has an Ultra HD camera lens that will strip away any editing filter used on that poster if I zoom in on it. Hi, Georgie. Kim, can you please move? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Fucking catfish. Weird. I always thought she'd be a lizard under all that makeup. I mean, I'd still hit, so I don't really know what you guys are on about. Kim, what the fuck? Cougars are my downfall, Donald. I mean, surely it can't be all bad, right? Let's go find a Sizzler's and think about this over some hot grub. Hillary dismantled the restaurant chain across the nation. Hillary, you fiend! It gets worse, gentlemen. 
Under her term, the United States ceased to exist. What do you mean, ceased to exist? Well, it's now called the sovereign hierarchy. Democracy is dead. In its place, the Clintons rule the people with an iron fist, literally. If they speak out of term or fail to toe the line, massive robots, strangely resembling Terminators, are sent into... Oh, shit. Sent into what? To silence them, Joe. I'll tell you this for certain. North Korea, in this reality, must have an unbreakable alliance with the sovereign hierarchy. We'd get along better than Liu Kang and Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Kim, Liu Kang was killed by Raiden in multiple timelines. Wait, uh, are you actually being serious? North Korea was also given the Liu Kang treatment by the sovereign hierarchy two years ago. That's it! I won't stand for these atrocities. We gotta help these poor people suffering. In his own weird way, Kim's right. We can't let these people carry on like this. Look, I hear you guys, but they have ground control, air support, and I assume most of the people had their armaments stripped away. Donnie's right. The only thing we can do is wait out the 15 minutes and try to jump back to Elon. Hey, you! Stop right there. It's presidential candidate Trump, Vice President Biden, and former presidents Obama and Bush Jr. I also think that's a Panda Express manager with them. Mr. Chang, how could you betray me? Arrest them. Enemy designation found. Fuck. So much for waiting it out. What the fuck? Who the hell is Mr. Chang? This is not good. Elon told us not to engage in situations like these. Fuck that. These people are suffering. American people. I'm taking down as many as I can until we can jump out of here. Joe, you with me? This is for fucking Sizzlers, Hillary, you crooked bitch. This is for North Korea. Oh, wait, never mind. I don't have a gun. Mr. Chang, the fortune cookie you gave me told me to be wary of those you regard as friends. But I never thought you'd be the one to betray me. Keep that bastard talking, Kim. I have him in my sights. I don't know who the fuck Mr. Chang is. I'll miss your broccoli beef. Mr. Presidents, get down. Let loose the javelins. Who the fuck is that? Firing! That's for all the Americans you tormented, Bill. That's for all the sizzlers you closed down. Mr. President, are you all right? Yes, thank you for your help, but who are you? My name is Admiral Anderson, and we are the Resistance. People determined to fight against the injustice brought on by the Clinton's totalitarian regime. You're the leader of this Resistance? Me? No, not at all. I'm responsible for various rebel networks and cells across our nation. However, the ones to give rise to this rebellion, well, it was you. You two, Vice President Biden and Mr. Trump. Wait, we founded the resistance? That's right. Well, this universe's version of you, that is. And me? Was I a part of the resistance? Of course! Panda Express proved to be a true ally of the resistance, supplying us with food and water whenever our movement required it to. You have my thanks, Mr. Chang. I am not Mr. Chang. Sir, we have movement! Admiral, we have F-35 Global Cyber Raptors en route. You all need to leave now. Radio in Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden. You all need to evac before their air support arrives. What about you? We can't leave you. Don't worry about us. We have been fighting the regime long before you arrived and will continue the fight long after you leave. Now go. My men will cover you. Donnie, get back here. The Clintons have air support coming in. We have to make our jump while we still can. Negative, George. I got a visual on Bill. He's still alive. Fuck. How much do we got to throw at this guy for him to stay down? Mr. Chang... Your orange chicken may be delicious, but your betrayal has left a wound on me that will forever scar. Fuck's sakes, I am not Mr. Chang. Establish a perimeter. Any and all partisan activity ends here. Today. If I crown him this time, it should put him down for good. Negative, Donnie. Regroup with us now. It's the last chance we'll have for a jump. Enemy units pinpointed. Oh, shit. I I don't think I'm going to make it back to you, boys. Get Joe and make the jump without me. Donald, where are you? It's been a wild ride, gentlemen. Oh, uh, well, at least I took some of these bastards with me. Donnie, come in. What are you waiting for? Get it over with you, piece of scrap metal. Well, fuck me. Looks like this sword is made from the metals of an asteroid. My generals weren't lying after all. Hot damn. Thanks, Kim. Joe, we're leaving. Rendezvous at the designated coordinates. Take away my sizzlers. See what happens. Eat laser, you Viet Cong bastards. Uh, is he usually like that? He hasn't taken his meds today. Joe, form up. We're leaving. Roger, I'm on my way. Thank you for all your help, Admiral. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And we wouldn't be here if not for your counterparts. Safe journey, gentlemen. Also, give Elon my regards. Godspeed, Anderson. Wait, he knows Elon? One last thing. I am not Mr. Chang. Yes, I agree. No one makes Mandarin chicken like you do, Mr. Chang. Fuck's sakes. Jumping now. Farewell, gentlemen. Live to fight another day. Live to fight another day. Finally, home sweet home. I'll say I've had enough of those realities for one day.
Mr. President, thank God you finally made it back. What the hell happened, Elon? I thought you said we were going to Category 6 realities. There was some sort of anomaly in the network. By the time I detected it, George had unfortunately initiated the jump. The only reason you managed to return here is that I managed to recalibrate the system. Anomaly is not the word I'd use, spaceman. We almost died out there. Indeed. I was able to monitor when and where you made your jumps from the terminal beside me. So you saw the reality where all the sizzlers were decommissioned? Oh, the horror. Yes. My team and I have led multiple operations there in an effort to aid the resistance in their war against the sovereign hierarchy. Needless to say, I did not intend to send any of you there. Not today, at least. What do you mean, not today? Well, today was supposed to be a training day. Dip your toes in the water, test out interdimensional jumping. Then perhaps after a few more sessions, I planned on briefing you on that reality. You saw the horror. Anderson and I need your help in order to topple the regime. What happened to avoiding confrontations to avert undesired consequences, Elon? This is an exception. We have reason to believe the Clintons of that reality might not be too far behind from unlocking interdimensional jumps. If that happens... Then our reality's North Korea will also receive the Liu Kang treatment. Those imperialist pigs! When will their hunger for power and lust for militaristic expansion ever be satiated? Going back to the anomaly, Elon, do you think it's just a random blip in the system? Unknown. We're still trying to work that out. Name any day or time, Elon, and I'll be suited up and ready to go back there. Wow, Donald. What happened to not caring about other realities? Americans from other universes are still Americans, Barack. Also, I have some lasers with Bill and Crooked Hillary's name on them. Hmm. Maybe it was the right call to bring you boys here. Come on, let's get to the mess hall. I have your favorite snack on hand, Joe. Ooh, is it? Yes, Joe, a chocolate chip cliff bar. Do you also have? Yes, we also have ice cream. Oh, wow. Hooray. Visual scan confirmation. Wow, this is perfect. No better way to set the Sea World mood than by also looking the part. We should take a picture so I can post it on my Instagram. Quiet, heathens. I have the crown on my head and therefore I issue the commands, for I am the king of Atlantis. You are all my subjects and thus must pledge your fealty to his majesty, Donald the Great. I can't believe that instead of just buying an animal plush hat from that restaurant, Donald had to bring a crown that he had stored away in his house. Quiet, peon. His majesty shall do as he desires. And as subjects of my great kingdom, the mightiest in the land, may I add, your criticisms and concerns are of no matter of import to one of such high nobility such as myself. Donald, keep talking like that and you will anger me. And once a squid is angered or in fright, I will have no choice but to ink you. Kim, what the hell? You know, I once saw a man with a Burger King crown on an airplane. It was a trending video on Twitter, actually. Oh, God. He was causing quite the ruckus, constantly yelling. Okay, how about we move on to a different topic before that conversation gets out of hand? I concur. Come, Jester, provide a lay of the land before us, and let us confer as to where we may begin our epic adventure. Well, I say we go to the Explorer's Aquarium. Nothing like seeing the gargantuan and majestic creatures of the deep to truly humble oneself. The great, his holiness, the high king, oh so very high, might I add, recognizes your suggestion but offers a counter-proposal. I say we go to Atlantis. It would be an incredible boost of morale for the people to see their king returning to his kingdom. They will be more ecstatic to receive me than if they were to see Jason Momoa himself. Ah, uh, but I wanted to see the sea critters. Here, how about this? We go to Atlantis first, then we go to the aquarium after. Hooray! The High King does not compromise with common folk. Donald, don't be an ass. Okay, fine, you bunch of babies. Um, I hate to break the bad news to you, Donald. What is it, my subject? There's a weight restriction on this roller coaster of 200 pounds. Impossible! How can a king be denied access to his own kingdom? Great. Once again, Donald's daily supersize me diet comes at the expense of ruining our fun. Quiet, Kim. Maybe if I remove my crown, I can meet the weight capacity. Donald, I don't think a plastic crown weighs 50 pounds. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Come, lackeys. Let us visit the nearest convenience store. I want to buy some candy bars to cheer me up. Nothing like a chocolate-induced dopamine coma to right the wrongs that this insidious amusement park has done unto me. Oh, but I wanted to see the sea critters. 
Don't worry, Joe. We'll see them after Donald gets his coral chocolate reefs. Yeah, Donald's not Donald when he's hungry. He does realize we literally just ate ten minutes ago, right? Some people, I swear, they just have no self-control. Yes, miss. I will take four of your chocolate coral reefs and three Mountain Dews, please. Why, yes. I do happen to be a bodybuilder. I'm just picking up these nutrient-dense snacks so that I can keep up with my caloric needs. My body is in an anabolic state after all this walking. Huh. Yes, miss, you have a wonderful day as well. Delicious. This is my favorite part. So what time is dinner? Donald, you cannot be serious. Oh, wow. Look at all these tiny fellas here. Donnie, do you think you can buy me one? They're so cute. Look at this tiny fella here. Or I shall call you Fluffers. Fluffers the killer whale. You know what? Sure, Joe. It's important to keep the public order in one's kingdom stable. And if buying Fluffers is what it will take, then that is what I will do. Excuse me, miss? Why, yes, I do happen to be all natural. You're not the first one to ask if I'm on steroids. I can tell you that. It's so refreshing to hear that all my hard work has been paying off. Here's my card. I want to buy that plushie for my best friend over there. What? Declined? Damn it. How can this be possible? It appears as though the king's treasury may be empty at this current moment. Just like your country, Donald, you too have accrued an insurmountable debt. Rest assured, though, Joey, I, like North Korea, am benevolent to my people. We always put the wants and needs of our citizens far before that of the states, as I am sure you all are well aware of. I shall pay for your plushie. Wow, thanks, Kim. You hear that, Fluffers? We're saved. This should cover it. Kim, you idiot. Is that Monopoly money? What the hell are you talking about? In Pyongyang, that is enough to buy you an entire car. Also, the reason why North Korea's economy is so strong, and the reason why we have no debt, is because whenever we need more money, we just print more. It isn't that hard, Donald. Come on. Simple arithmetic. Joe, I'm sorry, buddy, but I think you're going to have to part ways with Fluffers. No, but we were becoming so close. Just give me some time alone with him so I can say my goodbyes. I'm sorry, Joey. We'll bring him with us next time, Joseph. Well, Fluffers, it's just you and me. Let's treasure the time we have left together. Holy hell, what's taking them so long? My guess, Donald is probably ordering lobster. Either that or Joe got lost. I'm going to go in to find them. Sup, brother? What the hell, guys? What took you so long? George just went in to find you. Please don't make me recount the traumatic events of what recently transpired, Barry. My heart is still heavy from my departure with Fluffers. Um, okay. Well, I guess we wait for George now. Now, unlike you three, George's brain is actually wired correctly, and it shouldn't take him too long to return. That was unnecessarily hurtful, Barack. Okay, I'm sorry, Joe. Hmm, what's this? A little killer whale? Well, aren't you a cute little thing? Oh, hey, look. There's a button on you. It says, press me to record. Wonder what the last person that picked you up had to say. And there we were on the train tracks. Now let me tell you something, Fluffers. Back in the day, me and my friend Richter Scale Rick would actually race down the tracks while the townsfolk and the governor watched. Thought you said it wouldn't take him too long, Barack. He'll be out any second. The winner would be lathered in nacho cheese and would have the honor of counting the governor's cherry trees in his front lawn. Oh, of course, this was back when in order to get ice cream, you had to enter William's white van in order to get his triple caramel sundae. Okay, is there like a portal to Narnia in there or what? Why is it taking him so long? Typical George, always making us wait for him. I, His Holiness, the High King, would never disrespect my subject's time in such an egregious manner. My good friend Nickel Nate decided to enter old William's white van. And from that day onwards, we actually never saw him again. My God, did this actually happen? Oh, shit. I'm getting a call from Barry. Guess I lingered here a bit too long. Yellow, W, speaking. George, I don't know where you are, but just meet us at the aquarium, okay? Roger, I'll be there. Wow, what a spectacular view. Oh, my gosh. Fluffers, is that you? Joe, Fluffers was a plushie. This is an actual orca. There's no way it can be him. No, it's him. I know it is. I feel a special connection to him. Can someone please get this guy a doctor? Guys, I know you'll think I'm crazy, but I can actually hear him. <laughs> He thinks I'm a great white shark. Uh, are we seriously letting him do this? It's no silly matter, Barack. In fact, in North Korea, we have druids that also communicate with wildlife. Uh, is that true? No, George, it's not true. A at least I don't think... His High Majesty of the Great Kingdom of Atlantis would like to see how this state of affairs proceeds. I swear, I'm the only normal one here. 
Guys, he's incredibly stressed and depressed due to the conditions they have him in here. He's telling me to free him. I do got to say, it is odd how he does seem fixated onto Joe. It's almost as if he won't leave Joe's side because he's seeking his help. I'm telling you, druidic communication is a very real thing. In North Korea, we have a two-year mandatory druidic military service for every citizen. In fact, I'm a little rusty, but I can probably still confirm if Joe's translations are accurate. He said he won't last another night in here. Jesus, we can't let him suffer in there. We have to help him. Well, how do you plan on getting him out of here? If only I brought my trident of Poseidon. I could have easily manipulated these waters into a tsunami that would have delivered all of these creatures safely back to the ocean. Well, I admit I was skeptical at first, but if this truly is a North Korea custom, then I guess you know what you're doing, Kim. But what can we possibly do? I don't think we'd have an easy time convincing the staff to help us. Break, damn you! Jesus! Joe! Joe, where did you get that? Hmm? Oh, this here? Well, there was this young, angry white gentleman in the parking lot earlier. He had a duffel bag with a list of names and what looked like some weapons inside. I think he must have been a LARPer or something. I kindly asked him if I could have this pickaxe because it reminded me of the one in Minecraft. Joe, I don't think that guy was a LARPer. Holy shit. Okay, well, what are you going to do with that? Well, hit the glass, of course, you silly fiddle. And then what? Is it going to walk to the ocean? We could get a tow truck. I have a helicopter. What did he say, Kim? They're torturing him. He's saying they treat him like it's Guantanamo Bay. Well, fuck. He does look kind of sad in there. It's a known stereotype that we East Asians are known for never brutalizing or harming marine life, or animals in general. We gotta save him. Okay, so here's what we do. We go to management and tell them that we have Joe and a druid in our group. We tell them that through communicating with fluffers, we know he's suffering and that they either release him or we bring this to the public and they have to face another blackfish level lawsuit. That could actually work. Seems like the best course of action. Oh, look how happy he looks in there. Thanks for helping me out, guys. The King of Atlantis, His High Holiness, the Great, oh so very mighty as well, may I add, fights for the well-being of all creatures in his domain. Be that human, merman, or orca. No gratitude is necessary, Joey. Kim Jong would never let a beautiful orca such as Fluffers suffer under his watch. I do have to say, he does look quite grateful for what we did. Off you go, Fluffers. Bye, bye now. Hopefully we will meet again someday. Do any of you guys hear something? You know, this might be a bad time to say this, but I actually flunked my druid classes. I was kind of just winging what I thought he was saying. Fluffers? Well, there goes our day of relaxation, I guess. I was really looking forward to an actual normal day after all that multiverse jumping. Speaking of which, when are we going to go back and help Elon? He doesn't want us jumping until he figures out what the blip in the system was. He said he'll call us when the anomaly is detected and corrected. Well, I guess our day is still free then. Anyone up for some sushi? Really, Kim? With what just happened to Fluffers? Ah, uh, sorry, Joey. Too soon. 